Right, we are live. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I don't know why I find it so funny all the time. I feel as though I'm just giggling all the time. <laughs> Is that a bad thing to be giggling? No. 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 She'll turn you up. I moved you to a different location. So hoping people can hear you. I feel as though my face is getting redder every time I come on every single week. I honestly feel well, there's a glow. There's definitely a glow. <laughs> I went out for a walk yesterday and I feel like I got sunstroke. Oh. I know. Hi Jill. Jill's on. Hi Jill. Oh, uh, hello Jill. How hot is it in I Texas? Mean, <laughs> I think it's a nice week, Jill. <laughs> I need to keep watch of this screen every yeah, time. Okay, I'm going to talk about the star quilt that I did. And I sent you a picture, Mum, on your, your thing so you can see what it looks like again. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. beautiful, I love it. I know, and I'm going to talk about my book. She says, very hot in the 90s. I wonder what that is in... They, Americans work in Fahrenheit. So she's saying it's 90 degrees. Oh, hang on, I've got a computer here. Let me have a look. That's oh. hot, though. Why do I think that's hot? It Let is, me... isn't it? Um, and what do you reckon? High. Do you think it's going to be about 34 degrees? Um... So what is 90 degrees Fahrenheit and Celsius, there you go. 32, 32 degrees. Oh, one. wow. Could you imagine how hot that is? Actually, I think it got that hot yesterday in Edmonton. Oh, gosh, really? Because I went for a walk with Neil. Neil's my husband. And I went for a walk in, it's going to sound really weird. I go for the walk in the woods. <laughs> So I went for a walk in the woods and it was very, very hot. And I think I've got a bit of sunstroke doing it. And I never take water. And I don't know why I don't. I can't be bored carrying it, let's be honest. It was to carry water around with them for like an hour. But, you know, I have a sewing machine. I could sew something that would actually hook onto my shorts or something. But it bangs against your legs, doesn't it? Maybe I need to do like a, a bag thing that you put your water bottle in. There you go, that's a new YouTube video, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, it. so a water yeah. bottle carrier because I need to remember to take it with me walking so I don't yeah. get dehydrated. So yeah, I was in, I had to go to bed. Yesterday I was in bed. Oh, God. I'm whining already. <laughs> Oh. I've got my water anyway. So I'm going to talk about my star quilt. And I can't remember which number quilt this one is. I want to say it's like, I want to say it's at least my third quilt. Third or fourth quilt, this guy. And so I, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's like, I think it may be, it's not, maybe a twin size quilt. And I didn't have the whole pattern the pattern was just the star that I did so I'm having to lift it up because you can't really see it so these stars here are all paper pieced and I want to say there is like there's one two three three or four different colored teals in here because I wanted this quilt to be downstairs in the living room because I went with a teal like it's what's yeah it's dark brown I've got like a dark brown feature wall haven't I downstairs on the bay window and then the rest of it is all beige and then a lot of it is like I, I decided when I first moved in I wasn't going to paint all the walls a different color I was just gonna change the room up by you know changing my cushions and stuff and changing the curtains so that's why I haven't mm -hmm. decorated since I've moved in one there was that's what I was going to do. I was just going to change 
the curtains a different colour every time I wanted it to be a different colour. Oh, right. <laughs> so is it like meant for them colours, the browns and the... Um... Yeah, so I went with the browns and the teals to match my living room, even though this quilt hasn't been in my living room for quite a long time. It's literally been in my bedroom now. Oh, so, right. What made you do them um, stars then? What made you go for that pattern? I don't know. It's really quite spectacular, isn't it? It's it is. Cool. So, okay, so I got this book. This book is called A Thousand Blocks. And I'm not going to open it up because I don't know if I'm going to get it done for copyright or something like that because I don't know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do with the bodies. But here you go. This is the advertisement, a thousand blocks book. And as you can see, it's got a thousand blocks in it. And it's divided up into like, there's like paste, there's mixed techniques, there's foundation paper piecing, which this is, is foundation paper piecing. And there's also applique in here. And one of the good things about this book is it comes with its own CD. I know that sounds so old fashioned, doesn't it? I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> my, book, my book came with a CD. So like when you want to do your applique pieces, you put, you know, you get it, you download it from the, the CD. You find out what page it is and you print it out off onto your paper and then you can just trace around your applique or whatever. So, the star came from this particular book, and I'm not sponsored, yada yada yada. I'm just saying it because I like the book. Um, and each of these stars took me three hours to complete. Oh my goodness. See, it's something like that, it's a labour of love, isn't it? It is, because you're not going to sell something like this, that's for sure. Because no, there's... It, 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 how much would you reckon it would cost to to make a profit sort of like you know if you was going to sell something like that well i did some calculations i found some calculations online actually i'm going to find that book because i've always kept them calculations see if i can find it real quick <clears throat> um because it blew me it's away so it's also something you have to make, you sort of make for yourself or make for someone like you, you know, like a, a friend that you really, a really good friend or a, mem a family member, isn't it really? I mean, <clears throat> it, it costs a lot of money to make something and sell it. It does. Here's an example cost of a quilt and I wrote this down a while ago because I just don't think you're ever going to make any money out of making a quilt. I mean, I see people selling quilts online on Etsy all the time and it blows my mind at the prices of them. So basically it says cost for materials construction finishing for a 65 by 65 inch throw quilt. So materials for your throw quilt, fabric for the top. So basically they're saying six yards at $16 a yard, which is $96, okay? That's just for the top. Right, that's $96 just for the top of your quilt. Then you've got one and a half for the backing at 32 inches a yard. So I'm assuming that they're using the 108 inch wide batting. So that's 48 bucks. Then you've got the, um, the batting one and a half um, yards at $16 a yard for $24. And they're saying, um, five eighths of a yard for the binding at sixteen dollars so basically for for your materials you're looking at 176 dollars just for your quilt just for the the quilt yeah yeah so then they're saying like so if you want to do the construction of the quilt you should really be charging twenty dollars per hour because nobody wants to work at minimum wage let's face it and then um then they're saying so making the top Includes for preparing the fabric, cutting the pieces, sewing the blocks, setting the rows, adding the borders. So the basics say allow about 50 hours for all of that. At 20 bucks an hour, it's a grand. Just just yeah. for you just to work on the quilt. Yeah, yeah. The assembly of the quilt sandwich, three hours at $20, 60 bucks. Quilting on, a, quilting on a domestic machine, so if you're just using a regular machine, um, it's charged by square inch, 
in a simple all over design. So the saying, so it's 4,225 square inch times 20 cents, which is $845. So the total cost of the construction is $1,905. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got the, the binding, which I don't really think it would take, would it take two, two hours to do binding? That seems like a long time. Anyway. Yeah, that's a long time. That's just making binding two hours. What are you doing? No, I, I argue with that. You can make binding quicker than two hours and then charging 20 bucks, so it'd be $40, and then attaching the binding. Okay, this is not right because I've put the person 10 hours to attach binding. <laughs> 10 hours? Yeah, I did. I did these calculations when I didn't really know how to quilt properly. Um, so, so they reckon like so the binding and the and the attach the binding two hundred and forty. So I argue that it does not take ten hours to attach binding. Um, no. So basically, what these say is that the overall total cost of the quilt is going to be about two thousand three hundred twenty one dollars. So that's how much you should be charging for a quilt. $2,321 and I see quilts being sold on Etsy for like 250 bucks, 300 bucks. Oh my god, no. I think at the minimum, like even a thousand you're probably giving it away at times. Yeah. So really, like most people that do quilting are people that are going to be doing it for the friends, family, for um charity that sort of thing i don't really think you can yeah. make money off actually selling the quilts but i could, I could be wrong oh thank you I, Jill. I, I think, you know you had somebody that commissioned it sort of thing you know well you would need somebody um oh i see what you mean yeah well, there's, no, there's not you know, going to be that many people there. Says, you know, like a, they wanted something specific and, you know, something like that. You know, they wanted a specific thing and they get, wasn't bothered about the cost and this stuff. Who's not bothered about the cost? I know, but there are, there are people sometimes, <laughs> you know, like, you know, if somebody wants to save up for something for a special present for somebody, you know. Oh, like a wedding? Yeah, you know, like a wedding anniversary or, you know, a special birthday. Was, you know, even even it was like a, a birth of somebody, you know, a birth, you know, a birth and they weren't, you know, grandma and mum or whatever, they want to the spend something, you know, for like an heirloom. True. And I've seen people doing them um, quilts now as um, signing things for guests. So they'll do it like all one neutral colour and then instead of the guests signing a book, they actually sign the quilt. Oh, right. That's kind of neat. I quite like that idea. Oh, it's good, isn't it? So there's 13 stars on this quilt. Gosh, I need to talk three hours just to make one. <laughs> it took three hours just to make one. <laughs> That's not even starting like piecing it together. So all of these stars were foundation paper piece and basically you um and they were done in sections. So there was like one, two, three, four, five, six sections in order to make a square. So you basically like follow the numbers and then you fold things over. And that's how you mm -hmm. paper piece basically. And you do paper piece and you do you think that you're going to use your scraps up and you you can actually it does create more wastage than it actually uses up if i'm honest with foundation paper piece and because i did it even on these stars sometimes when you flip them over you haven't quite caught where you were supposed to go so i end up overcompensating to make sure that i don't make a boo-boo on some sections because sometimes they're like you know there's the lines are going this, that and the other way and then when you fold it over you need to make sure that you're like covering all the paper and stuff. So yeah, so I basically, I 
took so I got that book in in that book there's like all different books and then what I did was then I created like the quilt does that I'm probably going to put a picture of this whole quilt up on my um YouTube after I'm finished here so you can see what it looks like but I decided just to create these like little like border lines in between just to add a bit more of that um that teal color in between the blocks and also you can't really see it really well um, but I used this um Moda grunge fabric and it's also got like a teal in the actual brown so it's not just a, like a plain brown this fabric even though it looks like it, it does have like is it is it called yeah, mottles is it mottles that, yeah. And then around the border, I just did these like squares on the corner. And then I did another strip across here that has, and I did, I put some holographic thread in it because once over, everything just got holographic thread. <laughs> <laughs> so grab some holographic thread. I, I really like that, that too, Camille. I really do like that. You can't really see it too well, but it twinkles. No, but I have seen it anyway. Up in the sky, but I, I just really like it. See what I mean? Again, I'm going to go to land a bit more now here again. This is what really bugs me about you. You can do stuff like that, but you can't do drum and dressmaking. <laughs> how, how is that possible? I don't know why I can't do dressmaking. Bizarre. But I don't understand how you can do something so intricate like that. I, I don't think I even have one of my dresses that I've made anymore. I think I've garbage some of them. Have you? Mm hmm <laughs> Just because I just don't, I'm not happy with how they've turned out. As Marie Kondo says, I, it has to bring me joy. <laughs> <laughs> look at them and think I didn't do so well on this but no I don't like how I did my um, free motion quilt in it well I kind of do on this <laughs> so the free motion quilt on this I kind of like went with like I wanted to go like with a movement effect to make it look like the stars were kind of like moving kind of thing and just did all these like squiggly lines going backwards and forwards but when you look on the back side of it it just looks <laughs> Looks a bit like a gong show, if I'm honest. Me so it looks like it's I think I don't know why I just I know, but this was the first time that I realised that um doing uh, having a dark colour in your bobbin when doing like free motion work quilting work isn't a very good idea and always try and especially if you're a beginner and you're starting off new, I just think that having your bobbin to match the backing fabric and then the top to match that colour because I should have done should have done brown in the bottom brown on the top sorry and teal on the bottom to have hid it but sometimes another thing is when you're a big beginner you're like free motion quilt a bit too fast and go around the corner and then that light colour of the bobbin will show through on the top so that I kind of know why I I went with the brown and the bob and the brown in the back, but it just doesn't look very good on the back. So what I should have probably done is go with a dark brown on the back and dark brown on the front, and then used whatever colour for the thread for my free motion work. Well, uh, oh, I can't see any problem with it myself. I know, but if I entered this into a show, they'd be there like, hmm, what's up there? <laughs> <laughs> police will come out and say no 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 <laughs> maybe we should just do a quilt show just for beginners and any anybody can enter it as long as you're not an expert you can't enter it yeah that's a good idea <laughs> only beginners can enter it nah. <laughs> Did you find it difficult to do, or do you, you, you just do it, don't you? I don't want What, the foundation did you, enjoy, did you enjoy doing the stars? Did you, do, I don't know, did you find it difficult? I enjoyed doing the stars. Um, 
I would come, I must have had some in the background. Like, I, I actually, it's one of the things that I actually keep track of on my Instagram. On Like, if you if you follow me on Instagram, I have a page called Forward Our Creation there as well. And on the top of the stories, I actually did a story on this making of this quilt. So you can go onto my Instagram, you can press the stories, and you'll see me, like, working through the whole thing, like, bit by bit. And I'm glad I did that, in a way. And it's, it's just called, I think it's called Star Quilt at the top of my Instagram feed, and you can watch it. It's nice to like, look back on it. I remember getting frustrated with having to just do all these stars. It was like, oh, I could do another one, another one. <laughs> but, but the good thing about doing something so intricate like this and so amazing is that you can actually look back on it and think, oh my God, it was, it was so hard work, but I was glad I did it. Yeah, it's kind of the outcome of it, isn't it? It is, because I look at some of these quilts that people take like quite a long time to do and they're very intricate and that. And you just think, oh, I can't be bothered doing that, like that block. I just want to get one done, blah, blah, blah. But now, in a way, I kind of like just want to do one that's like a complicated. So then it could be like, oh, I really appreciate doing that. Yeah, yeah. There's one in this book, actually, that I really want to do, and it's called... <clears throat> what was it called? There's a few people doing it, actually, right now. There it is. Best Friends Forever. Oh, that sounds nice. It is nice, and there's, like, these little girls, and they're all holding hands. Oh, nice. And they're obviously different coloured, like, they're obviously, like, you know, different nationalities and stuff. And it's just, it's kind of fitting right now. And it's lovely. I really want to do that. So what, what do you mean? Are they all holding hands and they're in, are they in a circle or something? No, they're in a line. So you do oh, a really? row, you do a row of girls holding hands. Oh, I don't know. I think it looked nice. It was, you know, there was a circle in the middle. We don't mean they're all holding hands. <laughs> Way I would do it anyway. <laughs> but when you're doing a quilt and you're trying to do anything circle as a quilt, it's kind of hard. Because could you not applicate it? It would be easier to applicate it, yeah. Oh, so you want me to come up with my own design where they're all holding hands around a circle? <laughs> Thinking about my, I was thinking about that today, actually. I'm going to do it, my own design. I'm actually going to do it, get it done. I'm thinking of like yeah. doing, I'm thinking of doing some sort of a pattern, uploading it to my, my website and doing it as a free design. And then, yeah, I'm going to do something. I'm not quite sure what it is I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something. <clears throat> I need to get into like pattern design, that's for sure. Yeah, it'll give you some practice, won't it? <clears throat> it will, it will. Because I want to get into that, like, downloadable patterns and stuff so people can download them. Yeah. So, yeah, and then I just did the binding the same colour as the backing on this quilt. It was all moda, pretty much, this quilt. It was all what, sorry? Moda fabrics. It's a type of fabric. Oh, right. And my holographic friend. <clears throat> my mum was there like, keep an eye on the comments, keep an eye on the comments. <laughs> So Jill says it's a pretty quilt. Thank you very much, Jill, it is. And she likes the teal and brown. And then we've got Martha. Oh, she's called Martha Demon from Chicago. Hi, Martha. Oh, hello. How are you? Is the weather nice there as well? I don't know what the weather's like in Chicago. Shall we talk about my other quilt? Let's talk about my other quilt. <clears throat> Um, the one I've just done. Oh, wow. That's the one I've done. 
is this quilt, the one that I've just finished, which is the attic window one. I think I'm gonna have to hold this up so people can see it. <laughs> just like sprawling them over my sewing machine. You can't really see it properly. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna hold won't give it. it. Just sis that one, would it, if you did that? No, it doesn't. So this is the cathedral window quilt that I just did. And it looks like you are looking out of a window. And I'm going to put it right up close so you can see. So this is a panel. And I don't think it's supposed to be New York. I just think it's just called Skylines. And it's by a company called Hoffman Designs Fabric. And he does it in, oh, I say he, it might not even be a he, it might be a she. They, I'm just saying they, they do it in both a chrome colour as well as a colour, colour. <laughs> chrome colour and a colour, colour. <laughs> what can I do in a, in a colour as well? Yeah, but it looks kind of... I don't know. I don't like it as much. No, I don't think I even know. I might, I'll send you a photograph of what the coloured one looks like. It looks very almost psychedelic. And then okay. I liked, so this pattern was a free pattern and I'll link it. Again, I'm not sponsored, but I wish I was. <laughs> was is the other day I wanted to do an attic window quilt and I'm sure in this book somewhere called 1000 blocks there is an attic window design and I was like searching and searching and searching for this darn book for like I don't know let me have a look at some comments came in uh, Roberta says she loves it thank you and Roberta says the grey is better. So I'm assuming you've seen the colour one, haven't you, Roberta? I can't, I, honestly, I just don't, don't like it. And it's funny because oh, I'm going to go off on a tangent again. <laughs> right. So I thought it was in the 1000 Blocks book and I couldn't find it. And I got very agitated and I like looked through this darn book like four times to try and find a pattern. I couldn't find it. So in the end, I went online and I was like searching, searching attic window and um, quilt blocks. And um, basically I found a free pattern and it was over on shabbyfabrics.com. And they do some really good like free patterns there. So kudos to them. This is not my pattern, it's their pattern. And um, so, and on this panel part here, I'm gonna show the guys at home. So you see how it's going in the corner there. They do a really easy way of making that happen. So if you like this, they do a easy, easy way of making this happen. So if you like that pattern, <laughs> I'm like rhyming. Um, you need to check that out. If you've always wanted to do an attic window quilt, go and check it out. They make it very easy, shabbyfabrics.com, for you to be able to do this, this design. Um, and it's funny because I uploaded it onto one of the Facebook groups that I follow. And um, people there are like, oh my God, you're so amazing. Oh, my, like you, you did like, you must be so like, such an expert to do that quilt. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Everybody can do this quilt, it's easy. And then one person was there like, I have a panel and I'm too scared to cut into it. And do you know what? That was the one part that I wasn't scared about cutting the panel. You're not, you never are you. You're like fearless. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, I always think, you know, if I mess it up, I can just go to the cult shop and buy some more. <laughs> Shabby Fabrics, they actually did, um, so I think the top part of the window that comes down, they did it in brown, and the part where it's in um, grey that I did, 
they used a ombre fabric, which is a really good technique because obviously it goes into different shades of yellow. So they actually went a step further because they, they used, so their pattern is called Santa's List or something like that. So they've used a Christmas panel and I, over on the left hand side, they have a lamp. So Father Christmas is a lamp where he's like right in like checking who's naughty and nice kind oh, of thing. Yeah. And um, they used a lighter yellow shade of the ombre and then used the darker shades of that ombre towards the back. So they were like, where's the light shining and where is it going to be lighter on the window pane? And it was very, very good what they've done. So you're going to have to go and check it out and see what it looks like. Um, could you please show the book again? Yes. I don't know if it's showing up as backwards, but it's a thousand blocks by quilt masters. Um, not quilt masters, quilt makers, and it's a Fonz and Porter book. There we go. I would open it and let you have a look at it, but I just don't know about copyright, so I'm not going to do that. You're welcome. You should be able to find it on Amazon. Um, I actually got it from um, Chapters. Um, it comes with a CD, which is kind of cool because like you have all of your applique designs in there. Um, ordering it now. I tell you, I should have a freaking affiliate link. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can attach these links into my description. I can get a kickback of money from it. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> It was funny because I never, I didn't even see this panel in the quilt shop. So I was, I went to my favorite quilt shop. Um, I won't say the name because I don't want to see my um, being my <laughs> Which favorite. Which one's your favorite one? They all are. Right? <laughs> <laughs> How can you say you've got a favorite quilt, a, a fabric shop? So can I tell you what is my favorite quilt shop? And I won't even say the name of it. I'm just going to say my favorite quilt shops are the ones where they say, Hello to you. They remember my name. You know, they're my favourite quilt <laughs> shops. <laughs> the ones that like me shopping in their stores. <laughs> so anyway, I was shopping at the quilt shop and um, I wasn't even looking for a panel, actually. Um, what was I looking for? I can't remember what I was doing. And they had this basket, like, over in the corner. Like, just hidden away, like, a basket of fabrics. And I think I found it then, or somebody told me about it. I can't even remember. Like, I, I, I wasn't shopping for it. I stumbled across it. So, and that's how this quote came to be, because I wasn't even looking for it. I didn't even know it existed. And I don't even know, how do you even go about free motion quilting this? Exactly. Would you do that on that? I have no idea. Do you know what I actually thought would look really cool on this quilt? And I don't know how to do it. Or maybe I could do it. I know how I could do it. Do you like how I have these random thoughts? I <laughs> just stop arguing with myself in my head. <laughs> <laughs> would you just not just go around, you know, like the window part? You know, but this is what I'm thinking, do you know what I think would look really cool on this? Is if you actually cut some fabric out on the window and made them look like they were they had the lights on or something or they were glistening. Oh no. So a lot of people use um like foil on their like applique work and stuff. And it, all it basically is, is like, I, I have a, a friend that does quilting and stuff, and basically it's just like dollar store balloons. Do you know that material that from the dollar store, that, like the balloons, the balloons that have helium in them, and they're kind of like a foil? Oh, yeah. Well, that foil people actually use to applique with. <laughs> no, and the I'm, foil. Mum, don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh, let that, that come out of your mouth. <laughs> I've just seen some threads and I just want to snip them off. Um, I'm thinking, no, it would actually look pretty cool. Stop it. Now you're putting me off. 
<laughs> it was skittles, isn't it? <clears throat> I was thinking that if I just did some foil stuff on the windows, it would make it. But then, <laughs> imagine how many windows I have to do it. <laughs> There's a lot of teeny tiny window <gasps> fabric. No, I just say fabric paint. I don't know, I would, I would add something to it. I think. I don't know. Maybe some holographic thread. Mm -hmm. On the side of the buildings. Would that not add like a bit of dimensions to the buildings? I don't know, I maybe I have to go and have Google of what people do and how they... Um... I was thinking about doing some applicator today, so I'm not quite done this quilt. I didn't know how to make it bigger and make it look like and put a bit of wall section on the side of it. I, I do do a lot of... <laughs> I do some skirting board at the bottom. <laughs> and then before you know it, the quilt that's supposed to be only a small quilt turns into a king size quilt. Like it always I does. <laughs> and now you're gonna stick that in your bag, eh? I don't know. I have no idea. That's too funny. It's kind of cool though, isn't it? It looks cool. It is very, uh, it's, it's like an illusion, isn't it? Aren't they then? It's very, very clever. So you basically, you do, you have to cut the panel, you have to cut these panels up. So they tell you to cut it to a smaller size. So they give you dimensions of how much they want to, you to cut the, um, but I actually made mine wider because I thought, well, if I cut it to that size, I'm going to lose like an, another extra panel to the left, you know, rather than just like, I don't mind cutting away like something that can't quite make a block. I'm burping now. I won't mind cutting away something that doesn't quite make a block, but if I can make another block out of something to make it slightly wider. So mine was made slightly wider than what they actually said. So it would do, though, wouldn't it? Because you have to have it bigger. <laughs> Because it was funny, right? Because I was doing, I did the first, I, God, I feel like I'm just burning. I'm just putting my hands to my head and it was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I got a heat stroke, I'm sure I did. When I did the top section, so I did, I did my first row of this quilt and I think, how many rows is it? One, two, three, so it's four rows. No. One, two. Yeah. Oh, is it only four? Okay, four rows to the top. One, two, three, four, five rows across. I did my first row and I sewed my second row because what you've got to watch out for is when you're sewing this together, is that your window actually looks straight, eh? So it's got to look straight when it goes up and down kind of thing. And then, you know, I have this other section that comes across here. So it's kind of hard to have that line in, to try and get it lined up. When I first did it, it wasn't quite straight. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Neil comes in. <laughs> and they're like, I goes, oh, it's not straight. Like he's, I said to him, oh, how do you think it looks? He's looking at it. And I'm like, well, what do you think? And he's, he's just like looking at it. And I'm like, it's not straight, is it? And he's like, no. And my husband's a structural engineer. So it's like... <laughs> Come on, here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a window so it has to be straight because if it isn't straight it's going to fall through isn't it so in the end I had to sit down and I, I unpicked it I unpicked that first row and then oh, I, did I did you? it again yeah I did and then I remembered because like any time I do something like for the first time I've got to remember to widen my length for my stitches because if I have my stitches too tight it's just a pain on the backside to try and like unpick it so anytime I try and do something, I know that something can actually go wrong here. I always like learn from my stitches. Like, do you know when you're like attaching, like, like do you want know to do my binding and I do that bit across? I always learn from my stitches on the very first time, just to remember, remind me, okay, yeah, this is the right way. And when I'm attaching my quilt binding, because sometimes I, I make a mistake and I do it wrong. And then it's like, I have to unpick these tiny stitches out. 
So that if I do yeah. it that long enough, then it's not... It's a good idea, really, that, isn't it? It's because I've done it wrong that many times I just get sick of them picking. So I, I think know, I know. I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to learn from my stitches, so if I do have to unpick it, it's just going to not be a nightmare. <laughs> I've had to go on to the Instagram to have a look at it now. <clears throat> So yeah, like, so keep going on a tangent. Anyway, so um, when I cut these blocks up, like I didn't, so you don't like, so there's a big gap here, obviously, from where you're looking out the window for the window pane, but you don't, you don't compensate that from the buildings. So what you see at the bottom here, like the buildings taller up here because you don't, you, I don't, you know, I mean, it doesn't really matter. A building's a building as long as it's straight. It's just slightly tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I did actually um, cut off some of the tops of some of these, which is a shame. Like right at the very <laughs> top. Like, well, the, yeah, but do you know what I should have done? Was I should have made sure the tops of the buildings, so there was a little bit of sky at the top, rather than making sure all the buildings were right at the bottom. Do you know what I mean? I had to cut from somewhere because it needed to be like not so tall in length. And I should have made that from the bottom of the buildings, not from the top, so I would have had a bit of sky. Right. Someone's crying outside. <clears throat> oh, it's, been very, it's just been very noisy outside today. Children. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm talking about my cat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> say hello, Sophie. Well, Sophie was just crying to come in, so I just brought her in. Oh, she's like, Mom. I just put her on my quilt up. <laughs> <laughs> you like being on the quilt tops, don't you, girlfriend? Oh. oh, she says yes, I like. Can you hear yeah. her? She goes into instant perm mode when you touch her. It's so cute. See, she's on, a black, she's on a black quilt. You'd never know. <clears throat> hey. It's a good, 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 good friend. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't think I'm going to finish quilting this one. I think I'm just going to start doing a collection of quilt tops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I want to do another quilt top and I don't know what to do. The little girls in a circle. <laughs> but that involves me having to do the pattern for the little girls in a circle. <clears throat> if I just did the quick little girls in a row like they're supposed to be, I don't know, it looks, it's boring now. It's boring. It needs to be in a circle. And then you can do like, um, like some sort of flowers going around it as well. So now you're going on about Ring of Ring of Roses, aren't you? Well, I don't know. Is that what you call it? Thinking, like, are the flowers all like, do you know, like some like a green, like a greenery thing around it or something? And the sunshine in the middle. Do you know oh the middle? my words! You could do the sun. You could do the sunshine, and then you could do the little girls going around it, and then at the bottom, just for some like greenery, to do like um, like a you know like a circle of like um, some. What you can not? I don't want to say ivy, but you know like. I don't know something around the edges or some flowers or something as well. Is there a cat on this quilt? Oh, it could be. Couldn't you? <laughs> Little black one and two grey ones. Oh, Gatsby, Earl, and Sophia on this quilt. Hey. Mm -hmm. Aren't you? 
I feel like we're all talked out for today, Mum. You're like, oh, right. You're like, oh, right. What, about, what about Jill? Has Jill have done any, anything recently? Has she, have, you, have you done anything, Jill? What mm. do you do? What has anybody done at home? Let me know. What are you working on? Oh, Jill's, so everybody's ordering this book now. <laughs> well, that's good. There's going to be a big spike in people anybody, ordering this book. Has anybody done any of these cathedral, has, has Jill or any of the other ones done these cathedral windows? Or the, is that what they get in the book for? Has anybody else <laughs> done a cathedral window quilt? What are you working on? I'm finishing up a quilt called Enchanted Garden. Here you go, Mum. Oh, that sounds nice. It does. <clears throat> Enchanted Garden. Who's that by? I'm going to see if I can search it. Can they not send you pictures? I have my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group, so if anybody wants to share anything on that, you can share it on there. That's the only problem sometimes, like, because with YouTube, nobody can share anything that they, they're creating. So the only thing yeah, that they what... can, the only thing that they, people can share is, is based on my Facebook group. And I'm trying to be active on my Facebook group now. I have my Facebook page, but I'm trying to, <clears throat> trying to drive everything over to my Facebook group now. <clears throat> because I think people can post stuff there. <clears throat> Does anybody do any of that paper piecing? Does anybody do paper piecing? I'm finishing up a quote called Enchanted Garden. Lots of flowers and butterflies. It was a oh. block of a month with shabby fabric. There you go. I'm telling you, shabby fabric place is really good. <clears throat> Enchanted garden block of the month. <clears throat> this is something I should do, is these block of the months. You used to do that, didn't you? Um, no, I was doing literally stuff that was done on... So it's a lot of applique work. Block of the month, enchanted garden. And it's like applique and bosch spices, it's really cool. What colours have you gone with? Have you gone with the same sort of colours as what they've done as well? <clears throat> I'm just on the website looking now. I do like this um, Shabby Fabric Company, it's quite nice. Is it? So what is that then? What, what, what do they, what, <clears throat> what is it exactly? The block of the month, I think, is where they just release a block every single month and people um, just do the blocks and then the overall thing is, is that because it's done every month, it's not like a big task for people to like do like a whole quilt all at once. It, it takes it down to different steps and then you end up with like a really kind of cool block because it'll have like a load of like applique on it and stuff. So you're not having to like do it all in like one go. How oh, that okay? again? And then the next month they'll release another block and then the month after that they release another block. So I'm not quite sure whether the block a month you have to pay for it or whether it's free. They say you accomplish big things in small steps. Block of the month programs and clubs are a simple way to manage your time and your quilting budgets. Therefore, avoidable, affordable, easy and fun. So when you sign up, you'll pay a small 
fee to reserve your spot in the program. Each month we'll send you everything you need to complete one block. Oh, so it's a subscription. Right. So they're going to send so when, you... When you do all these blocks then, do, they, do you put them all together? Yeah, you put them all together and create a, a quilt. Oh. So basically oh. they send you everything to complete each block. So I'm assuming that they give you... So this allows to collect an entire match set of quilted or applique projects by making one quick project a month. So I'm assuming they send you thread, they send you fabric, they send you the pattern to do just that one block. So do they send you the backing and everything so you can actually finish the whole quilt off or is it just the block? <clears throat> Oh, there's a lot that's come in now. So, um, what do you mean? so Roberta's working on a long time gone by Jen Kingwa. Okay, I need to, I need to have a look at these things now. I need to have a visual of what people are working on. Long time gone. <clears throat> Jen, Jen King, Kingwa. Oh my word. That's going to take you a lifetime. <laughs> what? Wow. What is it? It basically is a long time gone. What do you mean? It's a lot of blocks. All it's wow. That's going to take you a long time. I think that's why it's called long time gone. That's Why impressive. Is it, is it bigger than a king size? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is a king size quilt. And it's, it looks very scrappy as well. It looks like something you could lose a lot of your scraps. It looks like a lot of techniques. It looks like there's a lot of like this paper piece and this piece. But I don't think there's any applique, but that's impressive. That's kind of cool. It's going to take you forever. That's definitely a... um. Roberta, that is definitely a um, quarantine quilt there. It says, love paper piece in. Jill, Jason, Jason Yenta quilt. Her, Roberta says she's got too many UFOs. That's because Roberta is working on this long time quilt. <laughs> Why she's got so many UFOs. UFOs? Um, unfinished objects. Un oh, right, yes, I It's basically when we're like, we're like squirrel, it's like, oh, look at that, oh, look at that, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, you're like that sometimes. I am you? like that. I am. Then you finish them, don't you? Then you do the same thing again. Oh, so basically, Jill's saying that. You can buy the back and it's optional. So basically, it's a block of the month. They give you... So am I getting this quite... So it's a block of the month. So they give you the supplies for the block. So it's just all the different colours for the actual block. And they're giving you thread, correct? Or not? Roberta says she's had it a year and finally got started. Oh, it's a 66 by 66. 66 inches by six. No, it looks bigger than that on here. See, this is why I go, Mum, got to send you a picture of this quilt afterwards. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So what sort of things are on the quilt? What, what's the theme? Is it all different? It's all different. There's like loads of, it's basically a load of different blocks on it, all made into like one big quilt. It's kind of cool. Do you know, it actually gives me, because do you remember when I was doing that, a block a day, when I did it on Instagram, like ages ago? Yeah. I was yeah. Like, all these different blocks. I was there like, oh, I don't know what to do with them. And you said, do I just make them all into like a big quilt? And I'm like, well, I, I don't know, it kind of looks a bit fussy, but now I'm looking at this, it work. <laughs> Get all oh, them yeah. blocks and just like... 
Well, I said that was made, made, I don't know, making it to my thingy bags. <coughs> but... Oh, I just saw my cat. <laughs> A cat panel, that is so cute. So you got that one yet to, to finish off, haven't you? Mm. Which one? The one that with, with you, it's going to be like with you in... You know, you've got you, you've not done you yet, have you? And no, because I'm in a yeah. country because I don't know what to do about me. It's like, because the cats are kind of like, I don't, and now I'm looking at that, like, do you know my, that avatar thing of me and you? I should probably do it like an avatar of me. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then all the cats and me look like cartoony, like we're supposed to look, rather than, Trying to do like I, I can't do realism. I just can't. It's boring. It's almost like I'm looking at this attic quilt thing, and it, it looks kind of boring for my style. So I am going to be adding some stuff to make it look a bit more me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm thinking when I do that applique of um of me, I'm going to do it more cartoony. But I still yeah, have to do Earl. Yeah. Earl. It's me and Earl to do. I started this like cat thing. And it's supposed to be a Anthony Warhol picture. And I painted the fabric because I couldn't we were under quarantine, so I couldn't go and get any fabrics. But also I don't think I could find all the different shades of grey either. So I just decided just to paint the fabric. I got some like really cheap non-coloured cotton it's actually on the floor here <clears throat> and you did you paint it with emulsion <laughs> <laughs> no i didn't paint it with emulsion so i've got this fabric it kind of looks like canvas but it is it's like an un it's an uncolored like cotton and then i could paint it with fabric paints mum I paint it with fabric paints. Oh dear. <laughs> that I got from Michael's. Kind of cool. Just different techniques. So I just painted it. I got I got grey, black and white. And I thought that I'd be able to get 20 odd different shades of grey if I like lightened it and lightened it but it doesn't work like that. I think I basically got about six coloured greys when I tried to paint the fabric. Like you couldn't get the, you couldn't get the gradients you know when you no. painted. In my head I thought I'd be able to get about 20 of them but I got about five. <laughs> It's not that it's, 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 it's turned out okay anyway, haven't they? They did. They've turned out good. Yeah, I do I need to get back onto that. But right now I've got into my head that I want to get some patterns sorted, so I want to do that this week. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it would be good. It yeah. would. It would. Okay, I feel like I'm just waffling on now. Let's see if we've got any more comments because we are gonna sign off. So no, you don't get thread in the box. So you just get the pattern and you get the fabric. Oh, Jill says thread is optional. Block of the months are you down? Why are block and block of the months you downfall? Oh, I wonder if she gets too many of them and then she can't keep up with them. Is that what you're saying? That would be me. I'd subscribe to something, right? And then one would come and you think, oh, you know, I'll get to that, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. And then all of a sudden the next month comes, the new one comes in the post. <laughs> <laughs> and before it's I know it, I can't. It's the time as well, isn't it, really, to get it all done? At least you've got them, haven't you? Yeah, 
You're on time, can't you? Well, it seems like Shopify, but it's actually do do YouTube tutorials as well. So they do the YouTube tutorials, so like you can like you know follow along with them, and it's not like you're trying to figure it out on your own, which is really good. Oh, that's good. That's good yeah. Because it's like I'm really visual. I just I don't want to be sat there reading the instructions. I hate reading the instructions. I'm not very good at it. I know some people like to read instructions, but I just want to watch a video and someone show me how to do it. Because I, yeah. I know if I'm reading something, I won't read it properly. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think we're better saying that, that they, they just come, keep coming each month and you can't keep up on top of them. <laughs> I know, I can imagine that. <laughs> Pretty fabric. Oh, I love this fabric. <laughs> I don't want to cut into it. <laughs> no, I do. I do. I cut into my fabric. <clears throat> anyway, we're over an hour, and my mum said keep it to an hour because nobody wants to listen to us for an hour. So we're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> that went quick, didn't it? It did go quick. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to talk about next week because my husband, like, Neil was there, like, what historical figure are you going to talk about this week? I said, I'm not doing that anymore, it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're going to cover. It's just going to be random. I just find if I do some sort of format, it doesn't work for me. So yeah, whatever, exactly. whatever goes, goes. So I'm just going to turn up every Sunday and we're just going to talk. And who knows what it's going to be about. <laughs> Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So anyway, we are going to go and we're going to leave you and have your fantastic Sundays. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for leaving your comments. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Have a lovely weekend. What nasty weekend.